Story time B. Be me. Be sophomore in college. Spring break. Decide to go to San Francisco with a few of my bros. I had this one buddy. We'll call him Dave. Dave was a fucking wild card. This dude would do just about anything for a laugh. In San Francisco after an awful red eye flight. Go clubbing every night. Having the time of our lives. Eventually our trip was coming to a close. And we only had a couple more days left in San Fran. Decided to go clubbing again. For the third night in a row. After a few hours of clubbing, we were pretty freaking inebriated. Finally decided to wander back to our hotel for the night. Began to stumble back to the hotel, having a great fucking time. We were suddenly approached by one of San Fran's finest, a frighteningly emancipated meth addict hooker. We are not interested in acquiring venereal diseases from a crack whore. Continue to walk. As we were about to walk by, this hooker said something that I'll never be able to forget. I'll bet each one of you boys $10 that you can't shit on my face. (laughs) Dave immediately takes her up on the offer. Me and the rest of my friends are too drunk to care. Hooker takes us all down an alley, then proceeds to lay down with her face upwards. Okay, try and shit in my face. Dave goes first. Dave pulls his pants down and exposes his bare ass. Just as he's about to pinch a log off onto this meth addict whore's forehead, she blows on his asshole. Asshole immediately shrivels up like a dehydrated raisin. Dave literally cannot shit in her face. My (laughs) neck. My turn next. I stand over her face, knowing that my $10 is at stake. I squeeze my bowels like I've never squeezed them before, and I began to feel a massive shit log stirring within me. I had gained confidence. This was my shining moment. Just as I felt the tip of my shit touching the ring on my asshole, A great wind swept up from the prostitute's mouth and instantly closed the gates of my sphincter. Just as Dave had failed before me, I was unsuccessful in my quest. Hooker proceeds to do the same to each of my friends. Not a single one of us can shit in her face. Hooker collects 60 bucks and we finish our journey back to the hotel defeated. All of my friends and I quickly forget the experience, except for Dave. How do you just forget him? There's no such thing as you. Oh yeah, you don't remember that? That doesn't happen. No one fucking forgets about that. Dave becomes legitimately angry that he wasn't able to shit in the hooker's face. Keeps talking about how much he wants his money back. Whatever, duck gif. Next day, our plane leaves the next morning. So this night was our last night in San Francisco. We decided to go round and eat dinner at the cheapest restaurant we can find. After losing our money to the hooker, we decided not to spend. (laughs) Find this nasty Chinese buffet. Eat a fuck ton of food. Tons of really spicy stuff. Oh no, I have an idea Uh, where this is going. This is not going to end well. Decided to go back to the hotel to chill and start packing. We get back to the hotel and a look of pure malice crosses David's face. We're going to get our money back. Apparently the Chinese buffet was beginning to have serious effect on Dave. Dave runs out of the hotel to go find the hooker from the night before. (laughs) Friends and I have no choice but to follow. Dave doubles over in stomach pain, still running with the ferocity and determination of a tigress hunting her prey. Dave begins to groan and fart loudly, running even faster than before. Finally arrive at the alley where we met the hooker before. Sure enough, the same meth head prostitute is standing at the same corner. Dave groans through clenched teeth. We want to try and shit in your face again. (laughs) Double or nothing. Hooker agrees. Takes us back to the same place as before and lays in the same position. Dave stands over her face as I remain transfixed with anticipation. Before the hooker even had time to purse her lips in preparation of closing Dave's sphincter, he began to release an ungodly <laughs> anal terror, the likes of which no man should ever witness. <laughs> Dave lets out a deafening war cry as legions of liquid shit spew forth from between his fiercely vibrating ass cheeks. The hooker screams of utter terror. <laughs> <laughs> the hooker screams of utter terror slowly become muffled as legendary proportions of post-digest spicy Asian buffet cover her face and chest. The shit continues to flow forth as the floodgates of hell remain open. Hooker attempts to protect her already scat-buried face with her hands, which are quickly pushed back by the force of Dave's anal explosion. Finally, Dave's ass slowly putters and flurps itself to sleep. Dave turns around, 
bare ass quivering from the after effects of what can only be compared to a nuclear blast in order to assess the damage. The hooker is literally covered from head to toe in shit, with the smell reminiscent of the prison cells in Auschwitz. <laughs> She's not even moving anymore. She's just lay still, put to shock by the force of Dave's shit. Dave turns to us with a serious expression on his face, bare ass still exposed to the breeze. Holy fuck, I've killed her! <laughs> the pavement around the hooker's head is also drenched in shit, giving the appearance of a grotesque brown halo. Dave quickly pulls up his pants, and we all sprint away from the alley. Still don't know what happened to that hooker, or if she even survived. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so bad. Be me, 20 year old degenerate, working in a factory because I need money. It's hard work, but it's honest work too. Honest pay for honest work. Co-workers are cool. Boss is laid back. Spend most of my day picking up and throwing heavy shit. Literally my job. Three months down the road and I'm in even better shape than I was when I played football in high school. Here we come to the reasoning for telling this tale. Where I work, and factory in general, there is very large population of spiders. Spiders of every sort. Tiny spiders, big spiders, tall spiders, mean spiders, nice spiders. I dislike spiders. At first I didn't give two shits about these fuckers. I'd falcon punch every fucker I saw. But working in a factory, you learn to work in muscle memory and by daydreaming. You think about whatever to keep your mind off of time. It makes the day go faster. I started thinking about spiders one day. They're everywhere. The shit we throw and our equipment has them everywhere. You literally cannot go five feet without seeing a web. I eventually start to distinguish spiders from one another, taking pity on different species. The spiders that I let live, in many cases, and save them from certain death are the harvestmen. Daddy long legs, thin spiders, etc. All the names in the book. These are the most numerous I see on a day to day basis. I see them in tires building webs. I usually feel bad enough for taking their homes that I pull them out by hand and let them go a few feet away. My co workers don't think it's weird because no one where I work is a cunt. I do this a lot. Eventually, it gets to the point that it becomes a part of my muscle memory to reach into the equipment, pallets, and components to gently pull out the little creatures. From time to time, someone will find a spider that crawled out in me and pull it off themselves. The reputation of spiders in our department skyrocket to the point that everyone starts taking mercy on the harvestman. There are a few people in our department who don't help or hate the spiders. They eventually join in on our love for the long-legged arachnid. Before long, it becomes a running joke that we are the spider department. About a month after I start to protect the long-legged boyos, I make a mistake. The tires that we pick up by hand usually have spiders in them. I always reach in, feel around, and pull the little guy out. I go to do this this time, and I feel a spider. Instinctively, I push him to the point he crawls on my hand. But when I pull out of the tire, I realise I've not pulled out a harvestman. The spider is a small little fatty. It pinpricks my hand and fucks off. Shit didn't hurt, and I didn't think twice about it. I guess you could say I was getting sloppy. I was showing more mercy to the other weaker species of spider. Instead of slaughtering them like the genocidal maniac, I sort of ignored them. Two days after that, I woke up to my alarm and got ready for work. When I went to tie my boots, I saw that between my thumb knuckle and my wrist, on the back of my hand, was a large reddish pimple. Go to work and don't think anything of it. Save a few spiders that day. No initial thought goes through my mind. By Friday night, I'm out with the boys when I realise that the pimple has gone from red to black really fast, starts to grow bigger, starts to become an issue, gets to the point where I put my hand in ice water to stop the swelling. Saturday morning and I'm in the emergency room, unable to use my hand. Turns out I've been bitten by a brown recluse. Not only was I bitten by the little bastard, the wound he left in me got infected and got into my bloodstream. Might as well have slipped my wrist. I'm not too fucked up, but the doctors got me on saline, giving me antibiotics like candy and keeping me monitored. I'm kept in the hospital for two whole weeks. By the second week, I'm able to use my hand again. And when they decide I've safely rid myself of the infection, they let me leave. Go back into work and all my co-workers have put together a work pool to help pay for my bills. Boss welcomes me back. And more than ever, I have one fucking thought on my mind. All spiders must fucking die. The entire day I work when I get back, I'm like the Columbine kids in a special ed class. It's a slaughter. All and every spider I see is on my shit list, except my beloved Harvestman, of course. It isn't long before my co-workers catch on to my genocidal rage. They join in. 
The entire day we kill and destroy every spider in sight. It gets to the point that we are barely working anymore. We're playing seek and destroy on easy mode. We aren't Harry and Ron in the Forbidden Forest. We are the starship troopers with nukes. Bell rings to let us know that our shift is over. We don't care. There's no objective. Absolute genocide. We spend an extra hour in the factory killing everything we can. In the end, there is only one last stronghold for the spider menace. The brown fan. There's dozens of fans where I work because it gets really fucking hot. And more often than not, the fans get inhabited by spiders. The brown fan isn't called brown because it's brown. It isn't. It's called the brown fan because brown recluses own that piece of shit. Hundreds, maybe thousands. It was broken. So our only way of executing the heretics was to attack by hand. Our strategy was clear. Just beat the shit out of the fan with brooms until the spiders ran everywhere, then stomp them out. We came upon the fan and found that it had been turned into a war zone. They didn't need our help. That is to say, the harvestmen didn't need our help. What we had done was indiscriminate murder, quick and decisive. The harvestmen had mounted a full-scale invasion, takeover and genocide program. We were all confused at first. The harvestmen weren't violent creatures. It took at least four of them to kill a recluse. But one of my co-workers said, they do the will of their god. We watched as our long-legged brethren tore through their shitty made webs. Cheap as fuck popsicles in hand. We gazed on as the harvestmen completely decimated the horde. Then we all went home. That's how I became known as Spider-Man at my work. I'm the god of spiders. I shall choose the day they enter the hall of webs. I open the gates only to the longest legs of spiders. I am the yin and yang of all arachnids. I'm like the real god, but I have a real job. Well, I haven't done one of these in a long time. Like, you know, like, a good, proper, bee tar tail sort of screw, you know what I mean? It's been a while. I normally only do them if I get them sent in. So, like, you know, if you guys have any good ones, send them on in. I couldn't pass up that one about your boy shitting on the boss shit. Fuck me, that was hilarious. I just couldn't help myself, you know? But, uh, look, as always, guys, let us know what you think down below. Remember to subscribe, like, comment, all that other good stuff. And, like, you know, if you have any good, you know, the problem I do is, or I have is, sorry, I don't really like doing bee tales all that often because they're a bit like creepy pastas. There's only a handful of the, like, good ones, and all the good ones, everyone's already heard to death, and... The amount of shit ones are just not worth doing, you know. Well, at least to me, I don't feel like they're worth doing. But if you have one yourself that you think, like, you know, maybe is unheard of or whatever, definitely send that on in to me. You can send it in to me on either Discord, on Instagram, on, well, not Facebook anymore because I got banned off Facebook. Um... Twitter? Yeah, I got Twitter, so I do. Yeah, send it on in. If you got anything good, just send it on in, and, like, you know, like, we'll just see how it goes, alright? I'll see you in the next video.